Hey folks, Species7 here, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the Maypole Farm. Now, I have finished baling that upper field, and let me tell you, there's, uh, there's a bale or two. <laughs> yes, indeed. We'll go have a look here. Hope everybody's doing well. It is, uh... The 18th of March today, here on the beautiful Sunshine Coast of British Columbia, Canada. And, uh, here we are. Get up here and get a good view. Look at all them males. That's all pure grass. And what I'm going to do is every second row, I'm going to wrap. So we're going to get a bunch of good grass and a bunch of silage. This, hmm... There's more of this than I thought there was. I had planned on tethering it all um, and making hay. I think we will likely still do that. So, now this piece of property down here was cheap, so I bought it and then sold all the buildings off it, which got me close to 300k in cash. So I put up a second cow barn and a couple of extra chicken sheds. There's nothing in them yet. Um, and we may not find that we're even able to fill them until we've done sort of our, uh, well, I was going to say summer autumn thing, but September 1st isn't so much summer anymore, is it? All right. What that does tell me is don't turn your tractor off. Perhaps, actually, you know. Turn it on. Alright. Well, this is going to be a fair bit of hay. But that's alright. Yeah, I appreciate you stopping by to check out the video today. And keep in mind, if you do happen to uh, like what you see, maybe consider hitting the old uh, like button. And if you're new to the channel and you like this sort of content and the other stuff that I put up on a pretty much daily basis, maybe consider subscribing. But uh, this is a good time to hit that like button before you get... You know, too relaxed and find something better to do. <laughs> All right, let's get this tethered. Oh boy. Um, yeah. I think rather than make an absolute freaking mess of it, there we go. is that no we'll stay on just one we'll stay on that one because this is the only one it's going to do this with anyway so you know we'll see what happens when we run the uh, tether or the uh, windrow across it of course yeah that edge of the map is Pretty scary. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no ground painted on there. Yeah. So it's, well, un unusual, shall we say. It is unusual. Yeah, we got a fair bit of grasslands work to finish here. It took me a while to finish the rest of the baling. Um, well, the rest of the baling. The rest of the baling on that field. And it gave me some time to think about what we want to do with this farm, or what I want to do with this farm, I guess, since I didn't give you guys any chance to think about it. Um, and that is...
and it's why I placed the other sheds down there. I think I want to grow crops that strictly deal with keeping the animals at their peak and make our money off of critters and their byproducts. And by byproducts, I mean, of course, you know, milk, eggs, and meat. So. And just because I'm no longer privileged enough to eat meat, well, that doesn't mean I would wish it on anyone else. To each their own. We are, after all, omnivores by nature, and by nature, I mean, all you have to do is have a look at the way we're built from our dental work on down, and it's pretty obvious we were meant to eat whatever we can stuff in our faces, <laughs> which is granted how most people manage to get through their life. So, yeah, it's strictly a medical thing, is why I don't find myself... Uh, Enjoying a preponderance of meaty products any longer. But oh heck, we'll sell them in game. And it's not that I don't eat meat, I just don't eat beef and pork. Or dark chicken meat, or you know what I mean? Like I can't, can't be doing aminal fats, so. Which is unfortunate. I wish I, uh. Ten years ago, it wouldn't have been an issue, because I knew quite a few people in this town that hunted. And, uh, venison is, uh, well, because it is all natural, it's not grain-fed or grass-fed, grain-finished, or yada yada yada. In other words, there is no attempt to purposely marble the meat. It makes it more than edible for someone with my issue. So, there you go. So let's get this all tenored, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a fair chunk of hay, isn't it? Oh, see, I should have another tractor down here with a windrower, and try to get them to follow me. Although, yeah. See, when it comes to stuff like this might create more issues than it solves. Oh well, we'll get through it. I made one, well, shall we call it improvement to the farm. I didn't find that that shed that I put up and dumped all of that TMR into to be a very practical solution to the problem. Um, so I did find a mod on the hub for underground storage, basically a grate in the ground um, with a, a lid to seal over it so things don't go, well, you know, muddy when it rains. Um, so I put that in, and then dumped all of the, uh, the TMR we had gotten out of our machine into that. And worked out extraordinarily well. And fit quite conveniently onto the end of the pad that that shed was using. So I plopped it down, put a shed at the other end for something else, which I'll show you guys later. And then uh, painted some grass back in, and hey, looks like it's been there for as long as the farm. Do one more row, and when we get to the bottom, let's uh, let's switch up jobs for a while, just so we don't get too rooted in here.
so we're gonna basically need to grow chicken food, i.e. either wheat or barley. Uh, and that'll take care of them. They're pretty easy going. And hopefully, once we get enough of their furry little bodies stuffed into the boxes, we can uh, expect some good eggage. For El Puegos, we're going to need, of course, sunflower and corn. No issues there. We've got a couple of fields that will support both of those crops in their largeness. Um, and, of course, the root crop, potato, which we're getting out of our greenhouses in a reasonably, you know, good quantity and quality. So that's not an issue. The other products of the greenhouses, which are uh, canola and sunflower in the one. Oops. I did not mean to do that. Which go to the oil mill and will therefore be a profit. I may switch those up to root crop as well. See how that goes. The sugar beets from the other one. Uh, the one that's got in our potatoes for the piggies, of course, go to the dairy so that we can produce uh, products with our lovely, lovely dairy milk. Indeed. And I say dairy milk because uh, I understand that the other milks have actually just uh, finished in a court thing where I guess the... Uh, U.S. at least, the U.S. Dairy Commission, whatever they might call it. Um, wasn't fond of the fact that uh, there were 75 other products on the shelf that now contained the word milk and had nothing to do with, well, cows. But uh, the producers of uh, plant-based milks I guess presented a good case because uh, they're allowed to call their product milk. So there you go. So for those of us, like myself, that drink nothing but like oat milks or almond milks, or, and I don't encourage almond milk because it's a horrifying crop, but uh, plant milks will certainly uh, appreciate that. Because you know darn well if they had to relabel all of it, yeah, that would come out of our pockets. So let's do a little bit of the wrap, shall we? Um. All right, I think what I'll do is I'm going to go down to the far end. And we'll take that as our first uh, There we go. Our first row. Well, I'll tell you, it sure would have been simpler to do what I usually do and just put up a couple of drying towers. One for hay and, uh... Well, they expect me to do something here, do they? And one for silage. But... I thought we'd go kind of old school this time. Of course, this is the one. I would have loved to have made longer seasons. Problem is, although that's great during the growing season, it sucks during the winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah.
kind of like, uh, well, kind of like the time change thing I was discussing a few days ago, you know. In summer, which is what it was designed for, you know, takes an hour in the morning when you're likely sleeping and therefore missing important daylight, and kind of tax it on the end of the day instead, right? So that you can, uh, you know, get an extra hour of sunlight to be doing things at the end of your day. <clears throat> we'll just wait here for this one to finish. But in the winter, it sucks. Like you're not starved enough for sunlight, and they go, well, let's, uh, okay, that's the next row. So, I guess we're gonna count. No, we'll leave that one to the grass people. Let's start our row here. Oh, come on. Don't be fussy. There you go. No? Oh, crap. Let's see if we can straighten it there a little bit. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't fool me. So then we can bring the stacker up. Stacker, packer, picker upper. And uh, do the same thing. Run it up every second row, pick up what it gets, take it home, come back and do the other ones. Uh, that should give us at least a stack of grass and a stack of silage. Probably not enough silage. Well, we'll see what the uh, what it brings. I mean, we're not uh, we ain't done yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This will be nine. I mean, I'd like to have at least two of each. Okay, then we skip that row, which puts us here. Up, 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 too close. Not quite as snug as the stacker, eh? You can't run it right along the back wheel. Oh well. I'd say I get better as I go along, but <laughs> I do have a track record. <laughs> 97 losses and 3 wins. Well, they were draws, but I'll count the draws as a win. Oh, and that's lots. There you go. Yeah, you know what? I think I am going to grab this one. Yeah. And we'll just trip on over here with that. 
Let me get it. Ooh. So you're the next one down, so it's this guy. No, it's not either. It looks like I actually missed a railway. Hmm. Oh. I'll do that. I'll just do two rows in a row. So, I'll just sit here and let this guy do his thing. Yeah, see, it's that awkward turn is the whole reason I was doing every second row instead of just doing half the field. <laughs> Alright. So how are we doing? Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, twenty-one. Yep, we're getting a couple. Because it's fourteen per stack. And we will certainly pick up another seven by the end of this. So yeah, just over two stacks of them. That should do fairly well. I like to have lots of silage because we're also using it in the TMR. Hmm. So hopefully this will uh, work out and we won't need to... Whoa. What the heck's going on there? Is freaking Windows doing an update or something? Look at it. It's just gone. There we go. Whoa. And I'm well past the 1.9 patch, so it's not because the uh, shaders are out. Alright. I think I'll grab the 
this end guy. Yeah, I'm grabbing the last couple. I say I don't want to run out of silage over the winter. Yeah, we get some more sunflowers ready to go. silage for the moment. Hopefully that's, like I said, going to be enough. To support a couple of barns worth. wonder if I shouldn't put up a hay shed of some type at this other facility as well. I've still got to put a manure pit in. So There's that. Try not to look down there, it's kind of scary. There we go. Alright. That, as they say, is a wrap. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Easy peasy. Now this guy has to go back and trade up for a wind roar. Oops. Don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I know. First time for everything, right? So yeah, we need to put a manure pit beside this guy, and a shed or two, and this will be a decent little piece of property.
But I'm pretty sure we have been here for at least an episode's worth. So, again, if you enjoyed, please remember to hit that like button. Do take care of each other, folks. See you here next time. Ciao for now. Hey, there's our corn.